In southeast Queensland, landslips are a common occurrence on the cleared slopes of the basalt, plateau and ranges. Although landslips or landslides are a natural landforming process, there is evidence to show that they have become more prevalent in recent times. With the impact being seen through devastation to both land and waterways, there's a great need to understand landslips. SEQ catchments, the Burnett Mary Regional Group, Mooloola River Water Watch and Land Care, Barung Land Care, Maruchi Water Watch and Gympie Land Care have put the landslip issue high on their agenda and are committed to educating the community on this subject. In early 2006, these groups hosted a landslip education day on the Blackall Range which developed into the creation of this educational video. Focusing on the Sunshine Coast and Hinterland region, this film looks at the causes and effects of landslips and suggests some strategies for their repair and management. Associate Professor Ron Neller is a Senior Lecturer in Environmental Science at the University of the Sunshine Coast, specialising in river systems and catchment management. The causes of landslip are actually quite complex. Um, people have a simple view that landslips are uh, the result of a single rain event or, or so on. I mean, in general, 90%, um, 90 plus percent of the planet is sloping. And so there's this constant uh, battle, if you like, going on between uh, forces of gravity, which are propelling uh, material down slope, and uh, the resistance forces, the, the, sh the sheer strength of the landscape to resist that movement. That can come you know, about by a whole variety of, of reasons. It could be uh, water, and that is, that is a principle mechanism. Um, water, when it enters the soil, uh, reduces the friction. Uh, reduces the cohesion between particles. So water is very clearly a dominant, um, I guess, attribute of, of landslips. But equally, a whole set of other factors come into play about the actual slope itself, uh, even its aspect, its ability to dry out during a particular day, whether it's northward facing, southward facing, how deep that soil is, its structure, its texture. Uh, so it might be sandy soil, but it might be well structured. Um, equally, it might be sandy and unstructured. The vegetation on top of it, whether it's there, whether it's been removed, um, whether in that removal you've, you've taken out the roots as well as the trees and, and, and so on. whole set of combination of factors, in a sense, intersect to create uh, landslips. Warwick Wilmot is recognised for his extensive work on landslips in South East Queensland over the past 30 years. He is the author of numerous publications and is the main contributor to the Geological Survey of Queensland Records. Alaney is one of the several basalt plateaus around South East Queensland and all these plateaus have similar landslide problems. It's built up by numerous horizontal lava flows that were erupted from a series of volcanoes around South East Queensland between about 30 and 23 million years ago. These plateaus don't erode at the top, they erode from the sides. And what happens on, on the edges of the plateaus as, as, the, as the escarpments start retreating is that you get small scarps on the harder basalt flows, the harder, thicker basalt flows. On the softer, thinner basalt flows, you get these benches. So these benches are sort of repositories of, of material on the way down towards the creeks and eventually the rivers. The other thing that happens around the escarpments of the of the plateaus is right at the bottom where the where the basalt overlies older rocks underneath, generally softer rocks, in this case around Melania it's fairly soft sandstone. Big aprons of debris that have fall uh, that have gradually moved off the basalt escarpment above, accumulates and on big areas that I call aprons. Areas that are affected by these factors in the southeast Queensland basalt plateau include Mount Tambourine, Mount Mee, the Blackall Range and Budrum. So why are these basalt plateaus so prone to landslide? Firstly because the basalt weathers to a deep clay soil and the weathered rock and clay and soil, they build up on these 
um, scarps and benches that I've just been showing you. And the horizontal basalt lavas, because they're horizontal, they feed groundwater. If the rocks were vertical, you wouldn't get that effect happening. But they're horizontal, therefore you get this water tending to come out as springs around the edges of the plateaus. Sometimes at the base of the basalt, there's soft sediments, probably muds, that were deposited in old stream channels. And these soft sediments, if, particularly if water is feeding into them, can provide favourable failure surfaces for any instability. As well as the geological factors, there are also climatic factors which impact on slope stability. Heavy rainfall periods have been followed by spates of landslips. This is due to the groundwater pressure rising to the point that the land fails to hold it. In southeast Queensland, there can be exceptional wet periods during monsoonal rains, where a huge volume of water is dumped over a short space of time. In 1972, for example, the hinterland town of Mullaney recorded 856 millimetres over two days in February, being 43% of the average annual rainfall. Probably the greatest factor contributing to landslips on susceptible slopes is tree removal. It's now accepted that slips are more prevalent on land that's been cleared of natural forest vegetation. Landslips commonly develop 20 to 30 years after the removal of trees from susceptible slopes. Tree roots hold the soil together and restrict movement. They're effective in lowering the water table through transpiration and so prevent excessive groundwater pressure in the soils. In the old days when people were given, settlers were given blocks of land, they had to have done so much improvement, mm. which meant removing all the trees, mm. and then they were given the, the, the rice to that land. Mm. This whole lower area would have been rainforest in its natural state, but of course it was a big, big cattle property. Mm. It was all planted up very, very heavily with natural, with native tree species that were indigenous to here. Um, they, they, that would hold it all right. There may be the odd bit of fritter, but there wouldn't, there's not going to be a, there wouldn't be a major slip. Yeah, look there. Yeah. See, there's a slump. The top of it is all wet. See yeah. the, see the dark green, yep. where the rushes are on the top. Yep. So there's, so that's collecting huge amounts of water. So that's going to get heavier and heavier and heavier until finally it goes out. Right. What should happen by rights is that should all be planted with trees to drain, to drain to, it, to, to transpire, transpire it, it out. Mm. Landslips can also be brought about by failure at the toe of the slip. This can happen due to poor earthwork engineering. Roads or houses built on these geological sites can be severely damaged. Landslips do not always happen on steep slopes. There are several types of landslips and they vary according to the geography of the location. The debris slide occurs on steep slopes next to gullies where colluvial debris is thicker and groundwater seepage is great. This is an example of a debris slide on the Mount Tambourine Plateau. Rotational slides develop on moderate to steep slopes, mainly next to gullies. You can see examples of this type on the side of the Mullaney Plateau. Multiple rotational slides are broad, deep and slow moving. They occur on benches and colluvial aprons, such as the ones on Tambourine Plateau. Earth flows are long, shallow disruptions fed from deep water sources. This is a summary of the situation. We have old sandstone underneath. We have basalt in a number of different horizontal flows. Some hard, some soft, hard ones producing scarves, softer ones producing benches, uh, a lot of loose material collecting on the scarves and on the edges of the benches, down on the apron down below, water being fed horizontally outwards, and quite often it is fed out on the benches because these softer flows are quite uh, uh, usually fractured and and disturbed, and the, and the ones underneath are fairly solid, so the water comes down, gets into this wraps of material, and flows preferentially upwards instead of going down through the more harder solid, solid rock. Water comes out, and uh, 
this loose material where the tree cover has been taken off trails. Down here, it's often accentuated by these soft sediments between the basalt and the, and the sandstone. Water gets into that and they fail very easily. This is my attempt to show what, if we had our time over again, which areas of the plateau should have been cleared, which shouldn't have been cleared. None of the scarp should have been cleared. And only parts of the benches should have been cleared. With the dramatic changes in Queensland's growth and development over the last eight years, State Government has recently reviewed its Integrated Planning Act. The updated IPA attempts to balance community well-being as well as protect the natural environment and requires local councils to address risk areas before approving development applications. Ken Granger, disaster risk scientist, was a consultant for the Caloundra City Council's landslide risk assessment in 2006. In the case of Caloundra, given the, the unique uh, conditions, particularly this basalt country, we zoned, we produced three separate zones, um, which council can then apply a different type of uh, criteria to development on. Uh, so the, the, the red, the deep red there is the country, this basalt country, which is especially prone to landslide. The, the report and the mapping has been accepted by council, um, and my understanding is that the uh, hazard potential mapping, the land, what, what's referred to is the natural hazard management area, brackets landslide, uh, forms now part of the planning scheme. So, as I've mentioned, if a, a developer comes along and wants to develop a particular parcel of land and it is seen to have landslide potential, it's in that landslide management area, then that triggers a requirement for the developer to demonstrate that it's safe to develop that parcel. In South East Queensland, land clearing has been widespread, resulting in potentially devastating landslips. The impact is being seen through the degradation of waterways which sit beneath these sites. On site, you, you, you get continual movement, you'll get continual cracking, uh, and uh, the, the landscape essentially becomes... Um, you can't pass over it, certainly you can't graze on it or... or other. The, the cracks, the exposure of the soil lends itself then on site to weed invasion. Um, but I guess the, most of the, the problems associated with these sort of landslips um, is downstream. Because what you have is uh, accelerated sediment transport, uh, the sediment departing the site at the lower end, um, and it, it's, it's moving downstream and uh, causing disruption to uh, both the natural water channel itself, it's, it's, um, it's uh, geometry, its uh, bed forms, uh, and as a result of that, it's also altering the, uh, the aquatic biology and its diversity and so on. So, the, the, unfortunately, the impacts of, of uh, unmanaged landslips go on for quite some time and are both on site and off site. Hellhole Creek is the unfortunate name given to one of the waterways that feeds into the Malula River. One of the largest landslips on the Black Hole Range is situated near the head of this creek and has become known as Hellhole Landslip. Landholders downstream of this slip have witnessed drastic changes to the water quality. We were sitting on our veranda just up the back here, overlooking the creek, and we heard a rumble. We heard a, a strange rumble, and then all of a sudden, this wall of water came down the creek. Dirty, muddy water, as you would expect. Uh, a flow that would occur in, say, a, a, you know, a full flood. There was a lot of silk, a lot of rock in that, and it took us completely by surprise. And I did report that to the authorities, to the council and to the um, Department of Natural Resources, saying something strange has happened. Um, I half expected that it was some disturbance, man-made disturbance, and I did associate it with a dam that had been broken on one of the uh, properties at the top of the catchment. Um, 
I had no hard evidence, but that did occur at the same time. I discovered the extent of it after seeing a geotech report that was shown to me by a man who works in council and realised that it was an enormous slip of about 400 metres in length and 50 metres deep and it was coming our way. As we've seen, landslips can be caused by both natural and human influenced factors. In this case, the hellhole landslip seems to have been caused by a combination of the geology along with the land clearing, overgrazing and impacted groundwater flow. You have a, a fairly steep valley floor um, with a couple of valley sides in, in close proximity. Towards the southeast of that, um, that valley floor ran a small channel. Now inspection of the site has revealed uh, some quite large boulders and well rounding of rocks and so on. That's indicative of, of good flow. So there's been good constrained flow uh, of, a, of a small creek system through, through that area. Now when one wanders upstream a little bit further um, one sees why there's no water in that flow in that channel today. The uh, previous landowners have, I guess, built a number of small holding ponds or small dams, whatever you want to call them, and restricted the water flow down there. Now, what seems to have happened at that site is the pondage of water at the top of the valley, at the valley head, rather than allowing that water to run down a bedrock line channel so that the energy of that stream is constrained, that water has now permeated into the soil mass of the valley um, which is adjacent to the stream and has clearly broken down the cohesion at the subsoil layer. So the ponding was not that effective, it didn't keep water uh, entirely on site upstream, it allowed the water then to permeate slowly under that soil mass and in between the rock and that uh, liquefaction has probably occurred where the whole the whole soil mass has begun to move and so the whole landscape is buckling and big crevasses um, quite dangerous in fact trying to walk across that you can easily slip into those and, uh, and I did so and you go up to waist deep in, in some of those um, and the valley edges then confine that and you have